Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to this lovely event. Can I welcome you to the stage, Stephen Carter Bailey. Hello, Tring, my hometown. I'm looking for a familiar face. Put your hand up. No, nope. there she is. <laughs> I got promised I won't heckle. She wouldn't heckle me. I can't return the promise, I'm afraid, Lorraine, so I might just attack you later. Welcome to Tring Book Festival. Um, some of you may or may not recognize me. I am local, uh, sort of. No, I am local. I'm very proud to be here tonight presenting um, somebody absolutely incredible. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to bring him out now. This is Cy King from the Harry Bikers. Are all the, those the cheap seats at the back there? Right? <laughs> I'm going to look at you, actually. Look up there. There we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome, Si. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, you for too. coming Thank tonight. You. We're going to start with the obvious. Yes. It's a plural, Harry Bikers. Yes. And we're very lucky to have you. We just want to check, how's he doing? He's doing okay. Um, he's concentrating on, uh, on, on the treatments that he's receiving, and we're, we're all around him for support. And yeah, he, he's doing as well as can be expected. He's doing well. He's Good. doing well. And you know what he's like? He's as tough as an old bloody boot. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh God. Well, you just get on with it and get well. You know? <laughs> Brilliant. So thank you for coming. To see Not at all. The we're going to talk about this one. So I, I say bikers because I'm old school, but there is there's a, there's a, there's a, an alter ego, a dieters, the hairy dieters. Well, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, 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 it's just a ruse. So what we do is we produce the hardback books to make you all fat, and then we get the dieters books to make you all fat. It's, it's just the way we do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. I love true. him. He's so honest. We're not swearing. Not no true. swearing tonight. No swearing. I'm no wearing the Baptist church. <sighs> He's watching. Um, let's, I just want to talk about a couple of recipes in the book sure. because I've done one of the recipes, the, mm. the chicken curry already. Yes. Which is absolutely fantastic. My first, the first thing I want to say about this book, and it's one thing uh, I look for in any cookbook or any writer, writers is can I buy everything I need in Tring? Now, we're not a big place, Tring. We have some shops, we have a little supermarket, and we are limited. And I can honestly say I think I can get everything in our little town. And that's more valuable than you'll realize, especially when you're trying to lose weight. Sure, I think, look, the, what, what's great about the books that we produce, and particularly the dieters books, that, that we, create its own, we create a narrative. Yeah. So it had to be simple, it had to be healthy, and it had to be great food with no compromise on flavor. So, so that creates its own narrative. So then what happens is that you come to develop the recipes, and we've got a great team. And, um, and all the recipes in the book are, are tested maybe five. No wonder we're skinned, actually. <laughs> we, it, it, that tested maybe five or six times before yeah. it ever goes near the print, and we're always very proud when people come and say, oh, no, the baker's recipes always work, which is great because if you follow the instructions, I mean, look, there has, there has been one lady that did ring up and say, they don't work, and I said, well, why? And we, get, we take it really personally. We said, well, why didn't it work? And she said, well, well, it just didn't, and it didn't look like anything in the photograph, and I said, oh. I said, well, can you just, let's go through the recipe together. And then, you know, when I was on the phone to this random lady that lived in <laughs> Basingstoke or somewhere. And, uh, and I said, let's go through the recipe together. And she said, right, okay. I said, so did you use it? She went, oh, no, I didn't use that. <laughs> I said, well, no wonder it looks like flame and wallpaper paste, because you've not used anything that is in the recipe, really. She went, yeah, well, it didn't taste very nice. And I said, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Fundamentally, you've used flour and water and put salt and pepper in it, you lunatic. <laughs> so it was all, it, it was, yeah, so anyway, we, we can't legislate for that, but we definitely can. <laughs> and that's the, look, that's the whole thing about it, Stephen. It's about, it, 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 you know, each book. It's great because because you create it's a, a, a narrative, you you always approach it with with fresh eyes. And I mean, I think this is our thirtieth book. I was so, just going to check because I'm I've, yeah. I checked my bookshelf of three. 
already. Thank you. Thank Number you. four. You've got a long way to Signed go. Copy. Get your finger out. <laughs> for eBay. I wish, no, he's put my name in that card. <laughs> um, but the books, but the books go way back. And uh, you know, mm. we've loved watching you through the, the, the years. Um, Thank you. When I first heard about Harry Bikers, I must admit, it was something entirely different. Yes, of I course. I made that mistake, yeah. but uh, I wasn't disappointed. It was yeah. a bit like The Naked Chef. Yeah. Again. Disappointed again, yeah. yeah. It was Channel 4, but you know, Yeah, no, well, you lived in hope, though, didn't you? We did, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the recipes are brilliant. They are not anything too far out. They're easy, they're easy to do if you follow the instructions. They're very clear instructions. <laughs> Pretty clear. It's like an airfix kit. You yeah, know. exactly. If you get, you know, you'll, 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 you know, you'll get a spitfire. It's just a word. <laughs> Um, I think, should we go straight to the audience for questions? Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, because like, you better have some, because this doesn't work. If not, work I have to ask otherwise. many more questions. Like, no, what's please your just star sign? Feel free. Yeah, hello. Oh, oh, oh we've got a roving mic. I love this bit. It's like Graham Norton. Hello. 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 Um, is there anywhere, any country that you haven't been yet that you really want to go to? Take the microphone off that lady, would you? <laughs> um, uh, the, I, uh, the Philippines, I think. I'd quite like to go to the Philippines because Philippine food, uh, Filipino food is, is fantastic. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. I always find, I always find, what is food about? It's about the celebration, isn't it? It's, a, it's always about a celebration. And I mean, we kind of repackage it in the West a little bit, you know, like it's, well, it's competitive, we've got MasterChef. You did really well up here. Did all right. I'm on stage now, look at me. Look at you. Hi, your mum. And, um, and, I, and I, I, yeah, so Filipino food is, 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 is something. This, the world's a massive place, you know, and, and we're constantly told, Dave and I have been five times around it now on motorcycles, you know, which is part of the reason we have shares in hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> <So> <laughs> That's another story entirely. <laughs> and uh, I, it, it, yeah, I, I think the Philippines, I'd like to go to the Philippines. Um, we haven't, um, I mean, I lived in Australia for backwards and forwards. <laughs> Mad thing to do. Um, I commuted backwards and forwards for a long time, for 10 years. And uh, we haven't filmed in Australia. We haven't filmed in New Zealand, which, and we know we have a big fan base down there. Um, but then there's, you know, there's places like Croatia, there's, there's, there's Albania, there's, I mean, it's just endless. And as soon as you start to put your feet and walk around the world, oh, the, yeah, Cameroon. There's a friend of ours that, that we, we filmed with called Stella. And actually, my son had a, his bachelor party uh, at the weekend, which is why I'm slightly flaky. <laughs> and it's now Thursday. <laughs> oh, isn't it? No, it's Don't Wednesday. Do. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Don't so, light a cigarette here. It's a bit <laughs> and uh, and, and um, very kindly, um, very kindly, Stella came and, and she's Cameroonian and, and she came and, and catered for us. And it was just, you know, in Africa, we, we, we filmed in Namibia. Um, but, you know, it, it's just, it's a continent. It's, it's huge. And the diversity of peoples and cultures and, and food is just as diverse. So, it, it, we've got, which is why I'm pr pretty cross with Myers because he needs to get his finger out because we've got <laughs> plenty of work to do, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many. Pl in answer to your question, which is a very long answer, but yes, there's loads of places we still want to go. But Philippines, I don't know why. It just, it, it, I was talking to somebody about it the other day actually, and getting very ac excited and animated about. I think it was a, a, a lady in a hotel. That's as far as it went, by the way. So. <laughs> If it's in the Daily Star, it's all a lie. <laughs> this lady here, did you have a question? Oh, go on. Do you want to make one up? Go on. <laughs> Ask him to start. No, I'm joking. You don't have to. Any more questions? Oh, there's a, I can't see you, but I can see a waving up there. Oh, there's a little. Oh, no, this is going to be problematic. I think you might have to shout, madam. Do a Juliet. Hello. It's the, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. To, to the virtual crowd, it was about, it's a question about the, your parents and how they influence your career. Um, wow. So um, I was the youngest of three. So my, my sister was my sister, my brother, and then there was me. And there was a 13 year gap between me and my brother. 
And during that time, my, my dad uh, was in the Arctic convoys in the Second World War, and then he went into, so he was really well-traveled, dad. And um, my mom always used to complain her story when he used to come home from sea, because then he went on to the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, then the Merchant Service. And, my, um, and bear in mind that this mindset is not typical in a North Durham coal field uh, with a pit head and a windswept hill. <laughs> It's not what you do. And my dad had come home from sea and all the rest of his shipmates would be, you know, would bring their wives kind of, you know, knock off perfume from places around Shanghai and all that sort of stuff. And my dad would just come in and smuggle star anise. And, <laughs> and, and she'd go, Stella, you'll, that, that goes great with beef. So my mom, and my mom was an amazing cook. She was very skilled. And, and skilled at, at, at profiling flavors and what sat with what. It was just a natural, it was just an instinct and very intuitive. So, um, so the, the smells that were coming out of my mom's kitchen in the 1950s and, and, and 60s was definitely not that of a, a white working class mining village. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by the time I popped out, there was an already well-established kind of international cuisine that, that that I kind of just stepped into really. And then my father died when I was eight because he was one of the first kidney transplant patients in the country. And it, unfortunately, um, uh, the, the, the anti-rejection drugs that we have now are really sophisticated, but then they weren't. And unfortunately he died because his body rejected the new kidneys. So what happened was that mom and I kind of grieved for dad's loss through food. It was our comfort. So I learned how to bake. I learned how to cook. I just, it was, it was, and we always had roti, it was always a, a house. Me, me mom used to call it the rotation, the, the rotational door where everybody would just come in and eat and disappear again. And it was just the culture of, of how it was, you know. So they had a huge influence on me and, and, and my mum, <laughs> My mom always used to say, she said, and you, you'll know this Stephen better than anybody, my mom, my mom always used to say, you, there's only two types of people in the world, those that have pastry hands and those that have bread hands. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, the only problem with you, son, I think you've got strangler's hands, so I'm not entirely <laughs> sure which way you're going to go. <laughs> um, so no, they, they were a huge influence and a, and a huge influence on, on just, just the celebration of food because it's a celebration and it's and it's also comfort and and my brother and a sister are internationally traveled they both live in Italy now so we, we we've always had this kind of mad international <laughs> international cuisine in the household really and that translated to me when I had my kids and and my household so it was always food was always just an expression of love and affection and care and that's the, that's uh, and hopefully that's what when you guys cook, that's why we cook, don't we? We cook for the people that we love and, and, and you know, that we, we, we want to express it in that sort of creative manner, which is just, I always find it a lovely thing to do. There's nothing better, is there, you know, when you're sat at the table and you've just cooked everybody and then you put it down at the table and you get that nod. <laughs> it's just that and you go, yes. <laughs> Have you ever had the head shake? Not that they've lasted particularly long at the table. <laughs> if I no, I haven't. No. I have taken a table away from somebody in a restaurant because they were being obnoxious. <laughs> and have you, have you, they were truly being obnoxious and they were being really abusive to some of the staff. So I just lifted the table up and said, I'm sorry, you've got to go. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. You know, if you haven't got the table there and you're just taking it away. <laughs> you go, in the chair. Uh, off you go. <laughs> were, you, were you a customer there? Uh, I had... I had some business interest in that particular restaurant. Well, you're not getting the. He was selling tables. I, yeah, I was flogging. Yeah, I was flogging uh, postcards at the back of this restaurant. <laughs> I had a, a, a question online from um, from Neil. What key ingredient is healthy but good for filling you up? Which I know exactly where Neil's coming from on that. Um, I.e., not potatoes or custard. He clearly has a punch on for well, it, custard it, and it, potatoes. <laughs> Custard and potatoes, potatoes not together. Or custard. Mm, that's an eclectic mix. You wouldn't have that on the one plate, would you? Well, maybe you would actually. Yeah. Um, well, look, book. it's 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 look. Proteins are really good for filling you up. You know, proteins. So pulses. It doesn't have to be meat. It can be pulses and veggies and, and all that. So 
Yeah, go ahead for the proteins because they stay fuller for longer. Well, lentils, they, yeah. the, I would say, I say cheap as chips. They're cheap. They're good value. And there's a lovely mm. lentil recipe in here. There is. It's great, yeah. You can buy them pre-packaged now, which mm. you, do it. you don't, don't shun anybody that buys that, but lentils are, are the best. Them. And you do a, a, um, a white bean mash as well, yeah, that's which if you're trying to keep off the potatoes, mm -hmm. brilliant. Perfect, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's it. But try and tell them, please, not to put those two ingredients together on one plate. That would be not good. He's added well, some, so not butter then. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, not that, no. <laughs> The only thing about pulses, obviously, they have a they have a side effect. A, yes, slight side effect. <laughs> That's why there's a little distance between us. It's not it's not COVID restrictions. <laughs> no, no, it's not COVID restrictions. It's just <laughs> yeah. yes, I noticed you were shuffling. Just, uh, got to lean on me. Any more questions? Oh, yes. well, hang on, I'm going to remember you. No, remember you. You go first. I've got, I haven't got my glasses on, so I'm, I'm just going to get. Uh, what's your most memorable trip of, uh, of all your Harry Bikers, uh, you know, Boot 66 or, you know, uh, what, what stands out in your mind as being one of uh, your best trips where you've, you've gleaned the most uh, from culinary uh, tastes? Wow. Um, that's, that's always a difficult question to answer because I think that, that the, the world is wondrous. And because Dave and I are who we are and we're naturally enthusiastic men, you always, and, 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 and you know, and pretty optimistic men and enthusiastic, as I said, you, you get something from everything. You just do because people love to share their stories. And, and really for the bikers, we, we are just conduits for their story. It's not about us. As soon as we get, um, as soon as we have somebody on, on camera, that has con uh, contributed a, to the program. It's their time. It's nothing to do with us. We just facilitate their their narrative and their story. I think, in terms of India, was pretty amazing. We spent quite, at the beginning of our careers, we spent quite a lot, a lot of time there, and um, that was mind blowing. It was mind blowing because there was like. 10,000 years of alchemy with spice and skill and technique and it just blew my mind because obviously we have a relationship with that sort of food in the UK because of the old, uh, colonial, our colonial past but it just so there was some sort of expectation and it, did, it wasn't that at all it was everything but that and it was amazing um, so in culinary terms, certainly India sticks in my mind because it was just so vibrant and, and, and people were just, it was hilarious. You know, the old Morris Oxfords and, uh, the, and the Morris Oxfords are used as, as cabs. And we, we were in a, uh, in, we started the, our trip in Chennai. Um, and the, the, <laughs> it was so dangerous to ride in Chennai that the BBC wouldn't insure us. True, true. That's the went, second time you said yeah, that. Yeah, so I know. I didn't well, trust yeah. the BBC. It's kind of stuck, <laughs> stuck in my head because, um, and, and, and they just went, oh, yeah, well, you're not riding motorcycles, are you? And went, well, it's a hairy bike. It's too dear to ride motorcycles. <laughs> so we got these two 1978 Royal Enfield bullets, the two 500, the 500s. And, um, and it was great because there was two fundamentally two fat white lads uh, <laughs> from the north on these Royal Enfield bullets. Everybody in cars and buses were going, it's two fat white lads on Royal Enfield, <laughs> it? And they'd start to wave at you and honk your horn, you know. But as they were thinking, they were wanting to have a conversation with you. So they just started to move across towards <laughs> you. And we're going, yes, it's lovely to see you. And, um, and you know, there's chickens and small horses flying all over the place. And it was, it was, so that was, that was one of, the joy of India was, was, was amazing. Um, Namibia was another place that just blew my mind because I'd never really, you know, I'm, I'm a working class lad from, from the North Durham coal field. So I never thought I'd, 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 have the, I'd have the privilege to be able to see a giraffe. You know, I mean, it blew my mind. Desert elephants. What? It was remarkable that, that we share, and unfortunately, because of our arrogance as human beings, destroy they have just as much of a right to life as we do. And that 
clicked. It just clicked. And, and I just, and ever since then, I, 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 you may or may not know, but I'm a, I'm a pretty, um, I'm an advocate of the environmental movement. So, um, yeah, that, that, that was pretty, that was pretty special. And then there was, and then there was Argentina, which again was just remarkable. You know, it was just after, um, the Falklands conflict about 10, 10, 12 years after that. So there was all those, that, all that politic was still very fresh in the Argentinian minds. And, and, um, so that was really, really very interesting time. Buenos Aires, I fell in love with um, a, a tango dancer called Anise, who I'll never forget. She will live with me as long as I live. Um, she taught me how to, how to, how to, how to, well, yes, no, life. no, not, not this, not, door. they shouldn't teach me, yes, no, uh, how to dance tango with a pair of bike boots on, that's not easy. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, so it, it's always very difficult. It's, 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 thank you for the question, but it, it, everywhere that we've been has something to remember us. To you know, you just do. You know, the old the old monasteries on the way uh, uh, through the. <laughs> again, the BBC wouldn't insure us because Dave and I said, "Oh, we want to go to Syria," and they went, you "What? <laughs> you can't go to Syria." So what? Well, it's there. It's nice. Hot. It's hot. It's hot. You know. Um, and he said, well, yeah, but the other country, there's a war on, you know, it's like, it was the, the Iraq war. And, and we said, well, we're not going to Iraq, though, we're going to Syria. And he went, yeah, but it's next door, you know. And I was like, oh, all right. You know, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? And uh, so anyway, we just took, took that in our own hands and just dotted it backwards and forwards across the, where there was holes in the fence. We're going, yeah, we're in Syria. <laughs> And um, but that was fascinating as well because the further up you got towards the border with Iran, which was probably the most sensitive border for the Turkish peoples, um, you got the old uh, Orthodox Christian um, uh, uh, monuments and Orthodox Christian uh, places of worship, which were exactly the same as uh, the Islamic places of worship because they shared them because the way that the way that um, that, uh, that we prayed was, was exactly the same. The whole process was exactly the same. So it was just little nuggets of, of that. That was just fascinating historically. For, uh, yeah, there was so, there's so many, there's so many, I could go on forever. We could be here all night. <laughs> we need a bottle of whiskey, you know. <laughs> uh, you don't. I, no, I, no, I definitely don't. I, I'm, I'm teetotal. <laughs> what day is it again? Thursday. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, next. Yeah, yeah, I do remember. She is. Quick on her feet. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, obviously, your parents encouraged you to have a really broad palette. And when we see you on your travels, you're really enthusiastic about everything you eat. But is there anything you've had that you <laughs> either couldn't? stomach or that you're kind of like well i'm never going to touch that again <laughs> yes <laughs> so another interesting place that we went which i i i i find um i find the 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 east quite difficult because i i don't have any cultural touchstone really because i'm a kind of western european I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't get it. And um, we went to Vietnam and we did this piece um, in, in Vietnam about when the Vietnam War was going on, the, the populace that were um, fighting against the, the, the United States uh, had to resort to the old ways of feeding themselves and the families and that was subsistence food. So there was in this restaurant, which was very straight, you know, it was, it was a, a, an amazing experience, but they had things like, you know, deep fried scorpion because that's, and then there was a whole story and narrative behind that. So while every, while the Americans were making everything they could find into burgers, everybody else was eating water rat and all sorts of weird stuff. And, and, um, Dave and I, and this was a very surreal moment. So we had this waiter that came over to our table who was 
clearly Vietnamese, dressed as a Mexican, with a bullet belt, like that way and that way, <laughs> full of tequila shot glasses. <laughs> so Dave and I kind of looked at each other, and, and I'm not going to do the accent because it would be insulting, but he, he, he kind of just went, what do you want to drink? And <laughs> we went, uh, well, I, well, I'll have a tequila. This is just a cultural train crash. This is just awful. So anyway, he said, what do you want to eat? He said, we've got, and, uh, and he just, uh, this was deadpan. He said, um, he said, we've got, uh, we've got uh, a, a penis. And we went, uh, right. <laughs> and we looked at the menu with Dave, went, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah because we were on camera and I was like, mm -hmm. he said, yes, we've got a deer, how's your deer penis? And he went, oh, I'm very sorry, that's off. <laughs> and we went, oh, oh, right. He said, but we have a goat's penis and it's big enough for two. <laughs> so I'll be the judge at of this that. time, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, at this point, we, we were kind of thinking, we've just entered an, al an alternate universe, you know? So this, this, set of what can only be described as tackle arrived in what can only be described as a frugal broth that I've never asked oh. what that was. And, I, and, I, and you can imagine. And the thing is that Dave and I just looked at this thing and thought, we're on camera and we're going to have to eat this. <laughs> so Dave just opened the garment and went, did a bollock? <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks, yeah, great. And he went, you, Kingy, are starting at the pointy end. <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, you can imagine it was properly chewy, not very tasty, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> it was hard. I've got a bit pale. <laughs> oh. So the chances of you going on I'm a Celebrity is uh, likely? No, because I still have a career, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's me fired. <laughs> Has there been an offer for I'm a Celebrity? Trust me, my agents wouldn't tell me if there had been. No, no I hate things like that. I'm, I'm, yeah. When Dave went on Strictly, I thought he was the bravest man in the life. Yeah. <laughs> so what, are you crazy? <laughs> well, actually, that, yeah, there's a bit of a story behind that because the lady that does Strictly is a very powerful producer and she saw us at the, at, um, the RTS Awards one year. And you know what, Dave's like, he, he, he's up for everything. And he's kind of like this really kind of excited puppy. <laughs> and, uh, and, she, and, and Louise Rainbow kind of approached us and said, uh, guys, would you like to do Strictly? And Dave was like, yeah, I'd love to do Strictly. It'd be great, it'd be great, it'd be great. And I went, absolutely not. <laughs> I'd rather have a hot poker shoved up my derriere than that. No, absolutely not. Funnily enough, Dave got it and I didn't. So just... yeah. <laughs> can't, can't think why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biggest show on BBC. Nope. <laughs> there's, there's a limit. Eating yeah, penis think... in, in, in Vietnam. Yeah, that's well, it. look, and, and yeah, that's the, yeah, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? Strictly. Strictly. It's, right, an, it's yeah. the next step down. So I'm it's, sure. Yeah, it, yeah, no, I, I, I just, didn't he do well though? He was great, wasn't he? Yeah. He was great. He has got balls of steel, that man. He's remarkable. What are you doing dressed up as Beetlejuice, dude? What's going on? <laughs> it's good, King. It's good, isn't it? What do you think? It's terrible getting into them silks, you know. I was going, yeah, I can imagine. I look like a badly packed kebab. <laughs> <laughs> I still got, I'm still thinking about that meal. Yeah, sorry about um, that, yeah. Next question. That was a good question. One and two, Thank one and two. <laughs> good evening. Evening. First, I'd like to say I beat you, Stephen, with your three to four books, and I'm on about 10 and now 11 books. And honestly, I try to wean myself off them with other celebrity chefs, 
and I always end back at your book, so thank you. Yeah, they're fantastic and they're Not easy. that we're competitive at all. No, no, of course, of Great. course. And thank I'm not you. just saying that. I haven't been planted in the audience. <laughs> we will need to see a picture of these books, otherwise we can't believe you. Pardon? Put it on Facebook tonight. want to see if you put your books like okay, that. Okay, I'll, I'll post it, yeah. <laughs> Um, what I wanted to ask, I've, I think I was reading recently how you both met today. You've got a fantastic relationship. You just bounce off each other really, really well. It's brilliant. So can you, can you share with us how you first, how you got together and how you developed this relationship and started this fantastic partnership, please? Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> 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 uh, we... So Dave, <laughs> Dave was a makeup artist, and I don't, well, he, I, I, theoretically he still is. Um, he he was a makeup makeup artist and prosthetic and highly skilled and highly 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 regarded in the film industry. And I was a a locations manager and first assistant director in the film industry. And we met on a show. Uh, on a Catherine Cookson drama, and I lived in the, I mean, honestly, the story, it would have been easier just to say Tinder, wouldn't it? And, then, <laughs> and um, we, and we just, and my role, at, at then I was, a, I was actually a second, second assistant director who does all the calls with makeup and costume and all that sort of stuff. So you get all the artists in and, you know, and Dave, we sat in the pub, <laughs> we sat in the pub, and I went, women, he went, 45 minutes if they need a wig. <laughs> Men, 35 minutes, 40 if they need a beard, tick. <laughs> Extras, don't care. <laughs> so, um, and then we just started to eat curry and drink beer and play pool, and, and that was it. Uh, we, a lifelong friendship after that, really, and, and we worked together a couple of times, and I used to go up to, Dave used to live in Huntley in Aberdeenshire, and he used to come down to he used to come down to my house with the kids and, and Jane for Christmas and we all used to go up there for Hogmanay and it was just like that and we just kind of rolled with each other and then and then there was one <laughs> there was one fateful fateful day I, I'd just finished the two Harry Potter films because it was the locations or one of the locations managers on the first two films and um, and I kind of wanted to have that Hollywood career and I, I kind of just wanted to to do huge films you know and then when I opened the cupboard door and realized that it was just more work and more stress I just thought oh yeah and not that much more money I thought right so I penned the 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 bikers that had a really terrible name it was like motorcycles food and the search for Nirvana you know what I mean <laughs> no and, uh, and I sent it to Dave, and Dave was on a, on a film uh, with uh, Christopher Lambert in, in uh, Canada. And I said, yeah, what do you think of this? And he went, yeah, it's a good idea. Let's we'll do this. And it was all about pilgrim routes. And, um, and I said, look, we'll just look at the food and get, you know, da 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 And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah that'd be great, that'd be great. And then um, he said, yeah, but how are we going to make that transition? You know, what, what, how's that going to work? And I said, trust me, there'll be a moment in our careers where you'll go, I've had enough. And there was, mine was on a Muller, yeah, Muller Light commercial, <laughs> where the producer was having a nervous breakdown because they'd forgot the hero yogurt pot. And I was thinking, it's all right, my crew's just about to go into triple time. It's after midnight, so you're in the shit, really, aren't you? <laughs> you know? And now, um, <clears throat> And Dave had something similar with, uh, with, <laughs> with a particular actress that I, I really does need to remain nameless, who he just went, I had more fun with the autopsy and prosthetics <laughs> than I did with this lead, leading lady. So anyway, and I just said, look, we just, let's just go for it. So that's what we did. We touted the idea around for three years. And, and, and look, you know, the bikers are at a... a are at a point, it's at a point in our career that only Dave and I know what's really, what really happened and what's really gone on and what's, because we're so close and, um, you know, he's, I'm family to him, he's family to me, we're, we're, it's kind of transcended friends really, we're just like brothers really and, um, and the sacrifices that we've had to make both personally and professionally to actually make the bikers work because, you know, 
it, 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 we have great fun, but it's, 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 uh, it's tough being on the road. This, it's tough on families. It's tough on, you know, you miss birthdays and anniversaries. And I mean, I don't think Dave, <laughs> I don't think Dave had a Valentine's Day with his wife for about 12 years. <laughs> and then when he did, I turned up. And I didn't know. <laughs> He went, King, it was really confusing. I didn't know who to pay for. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, well, you know, could have gone Dutch. Um, so, no, our relationship is, is we're just mates, you know, we're, we're, that was it. You know, that's it. It's I think just, that's what makes it work. It's two friends. You can't, we can't recreate that. It's just natural. No, the, the Evening Standard once said that we were two, uh, two Rada boys that... <laughs> <laughs> Two Rada boys that had been put together by a really clever production company. And actually, I found the journalist in the toilet <laughs> in Soho, actually, and he was having a wee next to me. And I went, oh, you're yeah, that journalist that thinks I'm from Rada. I said, I'm not. I'm from Gateshead. Clipped him round the lug and he weed on his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, that. Boom. <laughs> well, it, was a, it was a career highlight, that, actually. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, thank you. Sorry. Peeing and penises. Next question, please. <laughs> I remember you. I took clocks in. There's this lady here. No, behind you. You panicked then, didn't you? But have Hello. one ready just in case I do that again. Hello. Hi. Hello. Out of all the bikes you've ridden on all your multiple trips, Yes. Which one is your favourite? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I have mine. <laughs> okay. Well, what we try to do is we try to keep the motorcycles as appropriate to the country as we... So in Vietnam, for instance, you're not allowed to ride anything over 125 cc's. And uh, the reason for that is that the police have only got 250 cc's. <laughs> But then, so, the, yeah, so we, we rode these, these Minsks and they were what can only be described as something hewn from a Russian tractor of the 1930s. <laughs> it, they, were, they were remarkable things. Um, I quite enjoyed riding those actually because they just didn't stop. So you just literally had to jump off. It was hilarious. Um, I think my, the, the most able motorcycles, I think probably that we'd ridden were the KTM adventurers, I think probably the, the 1290s. They were, they were very capable and very fast. And uh, Dave and I rode through a roadblock, we didn't even notice, we, in, 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 in Austria. I, he went, have we just run, ridden through a roadblock? I goes, don't know, I was going too fast. <laughs> he went, yeah, I think we did. I went, oh, well, keep riding, dude. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, I, I think they were pretty good. And, and look, you know, when we did Route 66, that, that, the, 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 uh, the Harley Davisons were appropriate. I would have probably preferred Indians because Harleys were a bit of a cliche, but the Indians were, would have been better, but um, we couldn't find any. <laughs> and um, yeah, so what, what, what's, what's your favorite? What's yeah, the Harleys, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're typically American, they're loud, brash, don't make a lot of noise and don't go very fast. But other than that, they're grand. They look good, don't they? You know, yeah, they do. They do look good. They're, yeah, yeah, the end fields are great. They're, they're good. And yeah, no, it's always fun riding a Harley because, you know, you're on a Harley Davidson. It's, it's, there's a heritage to that, and it's quite nice. Excellent. And there was, there was another hand there. I need flashlights. Thank you. Um, any of the f countries you've been at, have you been tempted to go back to cover a wide variety of food? Now, I don't mean regional food, but I've lived in Poland for 18 years. Okay. And there's Polish food, there's Ukrainian Russian food, there is. there's German food. Yes. I, as a kid, ate in the Carpathian Mountains in the Czechoslovakian Czech Polish yes. food yes. and with horror I remember when I was seven drinking kumis in a collection of Tartar villages. Yes. Um, have you ever been tempted to 
go back and explore in greater detail. That's you know, great. you know what's what, what what's been really interesting for Dave and I. It, it, so how how the commissioning process works is that that we'll come up with an idea and the BBC will say yeah because commissioning comes round, so they have a they'll have an agenda that you're really not particularly privy to. But because we're so successful on BBC Two, particularly, you have to you have to play it to the gallery. <laughs> They're all waving. <laughs> and um, so all of these people are BBC commissioners that have absolutely no idea what the general public want. <laughs> At all, ever. Ever. Let's do another baking show. Oh, God, yours was great. I loved Thank it. You. Just saying. Um, we were Channel 4, by the way. Yeah, BBC's yeah. run no more. No, yeah. And um, so, so how it works is that we, we, we would dearly love to get more focused um, but it's, it's about what the channel wants to buy, really, and, and that's always been a frustration. And we're always quite, we've always been pretty loyal to the Beeb because it's a public service broadcaster. And I think, you know, whatever, whatever you think of them, they're, you know, that's, they're, they're all right. You know, they're, it's like having a dysfunctional auntie. You know, <laughs> they, they drive you nuts, but you kind of love them, really. And, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, the, the the variety of food, particularly in Poland, is mind blowing. Uh, it, it blow, yeah, because the influences from all of that area is just remarkable. It's remarkable, and the people are fantastic. I love them dearly, absolutely brilliant. Big Osh, oh man, I have that. Uh, yo. Do you? Oh, and do you let it go for days so you get the crunchy bits at the bottom? Oh <laughs> man, that is so good. Yes, yeah. Can I remind God, you? It's simple, so... healthy food we're talking. Oh yes, yeah, so it is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat that. Buy this. Buy the salad. <laughs> <laughs> I love a salad with beef. Shut up! You're getting us into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, what's um, your favourite yeah. recipe in the healthy foods? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> salads. I love them all. It's great. Um, I'm telling you, those, 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 those meatballs with a chip shop curry sauce. I'm such a punter, aren't I? I'm so, yeah. so... Um, yeah. Uh, where was that other hand? There was a hand. If, 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 if my publishers are here, I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Oh, no, yeah. yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you'll be getting your steps in tonight, the lady with the microphone, will you, Timmy? That's Kim. When you're filming the preparation of a meal, <clears throat> how do you decide who does what? Because on the, the, the finished programme, it, it, the camera cuts seamlessly between the two of you. But have you got a director behind the, the lens um, waving his arms and saying, no, you can't do that, or you must do this, or we're running out of time? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, we, uh, the, <laughs> no, we, we, it just naturally falls. So if you've noticed, Dave does like the fiddly bits. And I normally man the pan. Because <laughs> Dave's, uh, first of all, Dave knows the recipes. And I'm either hungover and have forgotten. <laughs> or um, I've just forgotten. Um, no, we, 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 we fall into... into in their categories, Dave does kind of all the because he likes that. That's his kind of he's Vagonian in his approach to you know he likes kind of crimp and things. I watched him last night like, picking thyme leaves off one by one. Yeah, yeah, he likes yeah. That. That's Dave hungover. Ah, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we we tend not to. No, so 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 the choreography, Dave and I work out between ourselves because the stuff like that, that you know, I'll deal with meat. Dave deals with fish mostly. I'll deal with seafood. Anything with a shell and crustaceans helps me. Um, uh, pastry and all that sort of stuff is normally Dave. I do like pastry. He winks at me. I think I've got yeah. some pies back there. Well, you're fine. Don't worry. And um, and yeah. So and bread because. You know, like my mom said, I've got strangler's hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I normally need the bread and, and all that. So, and, and you know, for, for the directors, we, we, we're very loyal to the crew that we work with and that we that we've worked with for, for many years because it's important to us that, that there is a creative shorthand because what we actually ask directors particularly and, and line producers to do 
they have to have a, an, a they have to have comedic timing. They have to be able to shoot food anthropology. They have to be able to shoot stuff on the fly. They have to be able to shoot. They have to be able to shoot food. They have to be able to be very gentle when it comes to 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 the uh, documentary elements of the show. So it's a multi-skilled approach to any biker show. It's not just you know I'm you know I'm great at, at shooting food. Yeah, but are you you know have you got any have you got any skills of shooting motorcycles and making those look nice? And have you got so Dave and I never approach a program in the sense of a television program, we always, because our background has been filmed, we always want to make it as cinematic as possible. And for us to be placed in the, in the environment. So no more so when we went up to the Baltics where you got those huge wide shots and, you know, it was, it, it, because we want you to see it, you know, you're, you're all our mates, that, that's, we always have that in the back of our heads. Yeah, our viewers, the viewers that watch the show are all our mates that we want to take on this journey together. And that's, you know, we want to experience together. So all of this MCU and close-ups and all that sort of stuff and being really analytical about the presentation of the food, that's important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that, that you see the countries that we are and the characters and the, and the personalities and, and the actual personality of the landscape because the landscapes do have personality. So, and I love the drone. It saved us so much money. <laughs> so much money. What do you mean you want another helicopter? No, we've got a drone. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, no, no, we shoot, we shoot films for telly rather than the other way around. Yeah, I know what I mean. <laughs> Any more questions? Please, you have one. I was going to say, uh, Stephen, you've cooked one of the meals in preparation for this. Um, what do you think of it? Delicious. It was good. And I enjoyed it. I lost a bit of weight. Which one? Chicken spinach curry, but I put some chickpeas in. Yeah, nice. Because it's it, it addition, bolts that, it, yeah. Yeah, bolts it out. And I did say we we're going to do the mojito salad later, but we're just going to leave the, the salad bit out. Yeah. Just have a drink. Just have a drink. <laughs> yeah. That's my aim and yeah. aspiration. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact it's a rum optional. I didn't understand what optional meant. No, optional. No. It's never optional, is it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but that's, that's it. it was, they, they, were, they were really good recipes. And I mean, I, I can follow a recipe, I can write a recipe, of but I mean, you can. it was. There's nothing in there that was taxing. And it's, when I say recognisable, I don't want to just keep doing a rinse and repeat the same thing. But when we're sure. uncertain, especially if we're dieting, because I'm a bit of a cranky one when I'm on a diet, which is now, I just want to cook, eat, and be left alone, and for it to be good. And that's, you know. Well, the, the, there's this misnomer. That I had a conversation today, earlier today, with, with a lady who was, it was a journalist, actually, and she was talking about her dad. And I said, and she said, oh, she said, he's driving us mad. He said, she said, he just denies himself all sorts of stuff. And, you know, he only ends up eating carrots and lettuce. And I said, yeah, but your dad's not a rabbit. He's a human being. And I said, give, him his, give us his address and I'll send, him, I'll send him one of the books. Because the thing is that you get into this mindset, you know, look, I've struggled with my weight all my life. So it's a constant battle for me that I sometimes get bored with and give in. And sometimes I'll go, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I never do. I mean, you know, I keep it off, but, you know, I'm not, I'm never going to look like Twiggy, am I? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm built like a brick shit house, so it's not. <laughs> and um, so, and you just get into this mindset that, that, that denial is, is the two days dieting and denial. Well, you don't. It's not how it works. Because it means that then it becomes unsustainable and you crave stuff. When you're dieting, there's no reason that you have to compromise on flavor. And all through the dieters series of books, that's been our core narrative. You can, you, we, can, we can take the fats out, we can take some of the carbs out, but your body needs carbs. Mm. So you, you, you've just, you, we just skim all of that off. But the flavor's never compromised. There's no, you know, there's no calories in spice. I think uh, also being on a diet at the moment, I don't know if I've mentioned that I'm on a diet. Yes, you have. Um, I've got a sandwich for you later on. I did, you offered me a sandwich back there and I started sweating. So, you know, I'll just take a group. <laughs> um, for me, I think I would rather want to take a recipe from you both, knowing what you've done before, mm. you know, deep fried cattle. Yes. But I know that I can trust <laughs> that you two are going to give it flavour. 
I'm not going to want to eat it. Thank you. And I'm happy to play around by adding chickpeas and taking the salad out of things. Yeah, because there's no reason, you know, the, the, the recipe police, as Dave often says, he says, look, you can put in what you like. You know, we used to get like loads of things on social media. I don't like chilli. Well, leave it out then. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm not keen on garlic. We put off in. And like, start to educate your palate towards that sort of thing, you know. I did say well, I'm going to do the fish tacos, but not dietary fish tacos. Well, I'm just going to add fat in it because I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I flipped it back, you see, I made it a non diet yeah, thing. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you, you, no, do the diet thing, it's tasty. You like it, it? I will, I will try it. Do try it, do try it. Do you have, is there any more questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Are you Britain? There's a virtual audience as well, so your question's being completely oh, sorry. missed. All right. All right, sorry, just again, right. what is your ultimate favourite dinner on, a, say, Saturday night after you've had a long day out and you want something really filling and nourishing? So I, 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 I'm incredibly privileged where I live in the sense that I have um, the ability to get a, a, a lot of great seafood from a great mate of mine. So there is not, I do this, um, and it's me pulling dinner, really. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you into it, just in case. So I do, a, I, I do saffron linguine, and I poach, so I'll clarify butter, so it'll be a pan of butter, and I'll bring that butter to the boil, I'll turn it off, and then I put lobster tail in it, and I take that out, and I pat it dry, I'm not serving the butter, I've just slowly cooked it in the butter. And you set that aside, and you have, I, I always do a shellfish reduction, put that over the top. And you put a tiny, tiny, so the balance, it's just, it's just that balance between, between the saffron pasta and, and a little bit of truffle oil. You toss that with some parsley, put the lobster tail on the top. You put your reduction over the top and you shave, uh, well, you, you, you sprinkle with uh, deep fried garlic. I'm just telling you, it's successful, fellas. <laughs> I think everybody just went quiet and just and listened it's just, to you intently. <laughs> and it's so, it's such, such a lovely, it's, it, and it's really pretty simple to do. It's just, it's just technique really, and it's, it's, a, it's a lovely dish. And uh, there's another one as well. There's a friend of Dave and I's called Mark Fosh who has, um, unimaginatively Fosh's restaurant in, in um, Mallorca and he does this Mallorcan salsa so and that, that's fantastic with a parvey of fish and he does this saffron and uh, olive oil potato and you serve it in oh, see, man, it's, uh, yeah so I'm a massive fish fan I eat a lot of fish and shellfish a lot um, I, and I, not too far from me, from me is, a, is a farm and, uh, and Richard's always going, I want to buy some meat? I go, yeah. And we've just had the new lambs through, so he'll go, <laughs> he'll go and I'll go, that one. he go, oh, I'm not killing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. So, yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's kind of, that's, that's my go-to. That's my go-to kind of dinner. That and beans on toast, if I really can't be lost. <laughs> <laughs> how are we set for time? I've got, um, we've got five minutes left. Um, yeah, I've got fine. a question online. How did you take to becoming famous? Was, was that a draw to becoming a TV chef? <laughs> <laughs> no. It, it was a happenstance, really. We, it, it, it's not what you set out to do. I mean, fundamentally, what I set out to do was, was, was have, a career, have a career change. It never, it never entered either Dave or, or my head, really. We didn't think that through at all. And you know, we, we, all we set out to do was create excellence. We just wanted to be, we just wanted to be the best programs we could possibly make, um, knowing what we would like to watch. So, and then, and then the fame thing, that just kind of, it, 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 it just happens. It's a really weird kind of, fundamentally, more people know you than you know them and you know and it's very flattering you know it's i mean i can't go out on a saturday night in newcastle anymore or a friday night or, or actually any night after nine o'clock 
because everybody's had a drink and you know they're all like eh, read mugger and you'd like yeah <laughs> no I'm smashing I'm just with me family can I have a I've not seen them for three months do you know I'll just have a selfie and that'll be it and I'll go smashing like, like. and then oh, bloody Nora <laughs> so no it's always very flattering it is it's all, it is always very flattering but the same thing is you 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 have to look you you know the people that come up with you come up to you and, and want them to sign you know sometimes it takes quite a lot of courage and it, it you know but just us you know we don't think of ourselves as anything other than us and and you know it's just it's just it's uh, the same people i, I don't I, yeah we're just you know and you guys pay our wages so fundamentally and you know you, you i never understand celebrities that go that are, First of all, I hate that word because it's just, well I, I just never understand. Yeah, you're well known. People with a profile, you, you, you know, that want to be rushed into a car and risk whisked away and all of that. It's all a bit odd. I often find, well, you've taken the king's shilling. So, you know, grow a set and get on with it. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's always a bit odd. It's all, but fame, it's, I, it, it doesn't really cross my mind. I, you know, I just, you know, I go shopping in the supermarkets. And the only downside to that is that there's a general focus by a certain echelon of people that look into your basket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> there was this great lady in, uh, in, in concert Tesco's once. You would be judged if you had chicken nuggets in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, I mean, like, you'll go, you'll, whatever you put in your basket, there's always somebody that comes back and goes, do you not make that yourself? <laughs> I'll go, uh, well, no, because, like, broccoli's out of season, you know? <laughs> and uh, and this, there, was this lo there was this lovely... <laughs> it, was with, like, her, it was her and her daughter... And they were so sweet. They came, they came up to me, you know, and I was in the... <laughs> normally, you'll find me in the world, world food aisle trying to find things that I haven't eaten before. And, uh, and I was in the world food aisle, and I, I have stuff that, you know, like all cooks, we, we cook from scratch, you know, it's just, it's all the ingredients. <laughs> and this lady was, was a, a, she was, yeah, she was of a, a certain shape, and... Her daughter was exactly the same shape. And they came up and their, their, their basket was piled up with like, you know, Sarah Lee cakes and, 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 and she went, E. She goes, that's the difference, isn't it? And I went, what's that, what's, what's that done? And she went, you see, if I knew how to cook, I'd be buying flour, milk and eggs to make Aunt Bessie's Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going, right, she goes, well, that's why we're this shape and you're that. And I said, have you got your glasses on? <laughs> 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 and, you know, so all of that's just, it, you know, all of that's really lovely. And look, I'm only human. Some days, some days I want to smile and some days I don't. And, you know, but it's always, it's always very flattering and, 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 and mostly everybody is, is, is very gracious in, 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 their, in their accolades, which is always very flattering. Any more? Any no. more questions? Any more questions from the audience? We've got time for one more. Should we yes, take right there. Question? Good evening. Good evening. Um, sometimes I get completely stuck in a food rut and you eat the same food all the sure. time. Sure. I don't know if that ever happens to you. It probably does, but it happens to everyone. Um, how do you get out of it? Okay. <laughs> um, you know, the, first of all, the, the, this is how I do it. Because you're right. I mean, you, you just go, oh, just, I'll make that again because it, you know, it was great or whatever. I tend to either go out to eat in a restaurant and to with a cuisine that, I, that I've not eaten before, and that normally enthuses me. Or I'll pick up a book and go, ooh. Oh yeah, you know that kind of relationship that we have with cookbooks, it's slightly pornographic. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
So um, I do that. That's how I get. Or oh, I'll start. Or oh, I'll ring Dave up, going, "What are you eating?" <laughs> <laughs> and he'll go, "Well, I'm having." I'll go, "Oh, right." And then he'll ring me up and go, "What do you have for your tea?" And I went, "You know what?" And I'll go, "You're in a rut, aren't you?" And he'll go, "Eating, yeah." And that's how we do it. We kind of just talk to each other about food, and it's always we're always we're just naturally over enthusiastic <laughs> about food, and um. Yeah, so that's how, that's how, how do you find it? Do you find, uh, do you just get stuck? Um, I've had small children over the years and now they're growing up. Sure. And we did weekends of foods. So we'd have international food weekends. Good. You know, this weekend we're only eating Indian food or Polish food because you were doing that in school this week. Or, oh, cool. And, and, and just trying to find ways around it. But sometimes they're like, just, we just... We head back to your the Asian Adventure cookbook all the time. That's that really interesting. One of their favourite cookbooks, and they'll just go, "Can we just have that again?" Yes. <laughs> oh, um, that's kind of nice. But yeah, no, the um, just. I'm glad, I'm glad it's our book and not some. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. You are my new best friend. <laughs> glad to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you for, for talking about clarified butter so beautifully. I've, I've, you lost me. I was mesmerised by that. I, 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 it's, it's one of God's wonders. I'm going to get you to do it like a, a podcast of just describing that recipe for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Once again, thank you very much, uh, King, for joining us tonight. Not and at for all. this fantastic book. It's been brilliant and wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Very much. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, to the virtual crowd, thank you for joining us. Uh, there are links to the books if you do want to buy them. Uh, I've just put them on your, um, on your chat. Um, and we can get them signed before uh, Cy leaves. Um, many of you have got books, so, and many of them are signed already. But if you want to uh, queue for them to be dedicated, Cy is just going to be out here um, just um, in, in the foyer uh, signing those. So... Uh, that is your cue. So, oh, is he? Oh, yes. It's you. best if you go first, Sai. Si. Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, massive thanks to Stephen for, uh, Thank for hosting and taking the questions. Oh. <laughs>And thank you all um, again. Before I go and, and, and get really irritated with you all because you've all got long names, um, I'd just like to say thank you, and, and thank you very much for, for the support uh, that, that we, we feel. Uh, you know, Dave and I are a very close team, and we're, we're two families joined at the hip. So thank you for all of that support and all of that kindness that we've been in receipt of. Thank you very much.